Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, as you know, my name is Sawana Edmond Elime, uh, your humble PRO, uh, and I'm here with Dr. Osric Nafti. Uh, I'll be asking Dr. a few questions as far as uh, stay in Qatar is concerned, and most importantly, uh, regarding his presence at the last uh, uh, CCQ Annual General Assembly that took place on the 11th of uh, the month of March that just passed. So, um, uh, good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon, my brother. Uh, so, Dr. Osric Nafti. Yes. Who is Dr. Osric Nafti? Um, I, Dr. Osric is a, I'm a, I'm a Cameroonian-born uh, doctor working in Qatar. Um, I was born in Kumba. Um, I grew up in uh, Cameroon, um, where my, my father uh, worked across the country. Um, and I was just thinking today of the parts of the country I haven't been to. So, apart from the sort of old north, which is the Adamawa, the north and the far north, I've been to every other province in the country because my, my dad was an engineer and was posted around the country. Um, so, proud Cameroonian born and bred, lived all over the country, um, studied up till 16, up till 18 in Cameroon, um, and then sort of went to university in, in, in Nigeria, and then moved on to the UK, where I trained as a, as a doctor, worked there for some time, and then I moved over to Qatar um, about five years ago now. Well, yeah. Okay, that's a very interesting one. And uh, uh, when I was giving your name the other day for, I mean, introducing you to Cameroonians, some of them were asking a question, Nafti, Osric, <laughs> they do not recognize any of those names. Maybe yeah, they want okay. to know okay. uh, uh, which particular part of Cameroon you come okay, from. Okay, so, so Nafti, it's, the real pronunciation is Nafti. Okay. Um, Nafti is a, is a, is a well-known Bansa name. So I'm from So in Cameroon, in the Northwest province, um, for those that know uh, we are proud of who we are. I know you exactly. know the song. Exactly. Um, so it's 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 uh, one of the, the sort of foremost uh, sort of uh, ethnic groups in the northwest. So that's where I come from, um, and that's my background. So those are my roots. Um, but as I said, I've lived across the country, and my my family home, so to speak, is in Bamenda. So, okay. um, but yes, I'm I'm so born and bred, um, but. Obviously, I'm, I'm Cameroonian uh, uh, exactly, overall. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Doctor. Uh, you just mentioned you are a medical doctor. Maybe Cameroonians here who might want to know um, which specialty you, okay. you are into. So okay. that who knows? They might want to contact you to ask one or two questions. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So I'm, a, I'm trained as an obstetrician and gynecologist. Um, so, um, and, and I work at Alwakra Hospital, um, which I'm sure you know. Very um, good. I've had the pleasure of, of looking after a few uh, Cameroonians, actually. Um, and it's always fascinating because when I call them into the room and I say, where are you from? Um, <laughs> They're looking at me strange because most people would think I'm Nigerian or, or Ghanaian exactly. as a start. Right. Um, and, uh, and then when I, yeah, also that. Well, then when I tell them um, uh, I come from Bamenda, the, the eyes wide open. So it's always a nice really feeling nice. to have someone from your family look exactly. after you. Um, so yeah, it's always a pleasure. Um, and it, it always makes me happy to be able to look after one of uh, my own people, so right. to speak. Um, right. and, and as a community, I think there's something that we need to do more of. Exactly. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, a gynecologist, uh, our own brother, and uh, of course, uh, when people come to discover that you are from their place, if you find them that sick bed, when you make rounds in the morning, I'm, I'm sure healing starts from there. Mm -hmm. They just start getting healing uh, healed from that point. So, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Doctor. I uh, will want to ask you uh, how you felt you were present at the at the last uh, uh, Cameroonian General Assembly, the Cameroonians who are living in Qatar, they had a General Assembly on the 11th of March, mm -hmm. uh, and you were present, even though you were informed uh, just a few hours before the, the event. Yeah. How did you feel being part of that occasion? Um, you, as you rightly pointed out, I was not given much notice, but it, thankfully I was free on the day, and I thought, wow, it, it, it's really important to connect with my own people. Um, <laughs> It was wonderful to join lots of uh, young people um, and families from Cameroon. It's it's amazing that there's so many there are so many kids as well. Um, so there's lots there's a big community uh, that some have been here quite a long time. I was surprised to find out, and some are still sort of not too long ago. But also there's also even a second generation. So families are having children in Qatar. So okay. it was absolutely wonderful. I had a great time. Um, 
Um, we spent a great afternoon together. We listened to things that the community was trying to do. We enjoyed our own music. Mm -hmm. we, we, we did things our own way, you know? Um, so what better way to spend a few hours than to sort Correct. of get that feeling of home again. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, uh, unfortunately, I haven't been home for a while, but, but it, it always warms my heart and gives me pleasure to do things with, with Cameroonians together. Correct. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, I'm sure you listened to some of the challenges uh, Cameroonians in Qatar are facing. Um, I know very well that uh, maybe you have a UK nationality now <laughs> and uh, you might not be feeling the pain. People who are bearing the Cameroonian passport are feeling in this country. Mm -hmm. We do not have an embassy here. We do not have a consulate. So whenever we want to establish documents, we go through a lot of things. I mean, a lot of stress. We have to send documents to Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, we are pushing so strongly that we have such an office here so that we can easily uh, establish our documents. I don't know what if you have anything you can tell us regarding that and maybe any Cameroonian official who might be watching this video may yeah. want to listen from you as well. Yeah, I mean that is interesting. I'm, I'm facing some of the same challenges trying to, to do some documents that sort of uh, are trying to visit Cameroon in terms of applying for visas. It has to go to Saudi. You're absolutely right. So definitely it's a challenge. Um, I know and I understand that the community here is quite big. So it's not as if there isn't a population that needs uh, uh, support and a service. Um, and I think also from a, from a purely um, geopolitical standpoint, um, Qatar as a country is, is, is doing big things in the world and very influential. So it, 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 it sort of makes sense logically to, be, to have a presence here with sort of the, the global reach that this, this country has. Um, and I'm sure there's, there's opportunities for, for our country to benefit um business wise um and industry wise from from having a closer link with this country so it would benefit not just our people um on the ground here in terms of ease of access in terms of documentation and support when there's consular matters that you need right. but also as a country I, I think we would benefit greatly as well mm. to align ourselves with this country which is very progressive and mm. has done amazingly well in terms of my five years here the changes right. have been immense you know correct uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for that great response. We hope that uh, people who have uh, the force to make things happen in Cameroon will uh, consider what you also say now. And uh, you have also faced the challenge. Uh, I can remember you were trying to ask uh, just what you already mentioned, uh, how to get uh, your documents established so that you can visit Cameroon by in any time from now. So you felt the pinch as well. So. Doctor, we will um, go to something else now, completely something different. Uh, some time ago, I think before the, the, the coming of coronavirus, you thought of Cameroonians uh, together with uh, your family and the family of uh, Professor Justine Con Conje uh, and uh, Mrs. Kila Conje. Um, I knew people thought that you could give uh, Cameroonians something. I mean, people who are hungry, because I know you must have realized that a lot of people are here who do not have something to eat. Mm. And together you, 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 you put hands and you provided some food for Cameroonians, which uh, you contacted me and I had to uh, come here with another brother, brother Austin Nembo, mm -hmm. and we had to carry that food to distribute to Cameroonians. And we saw uh, people indicating that they need the food, they need the food when we dropped the message on our WhatsApp platform. Mm. Uh, I want to ask you now, uh, people don't commonly do things like this. What prompted you, mm. uh, considering that you had not known so mm. many Cameroonians mm. in Qatar, mm -hmm. what prompted you and this uh, family of uh, Professor Konje to do this? Um, I think at the time it was at the beginning of the sort of coronavirus, and, right. and as you as you may well remember, we all um, most people were confined at home, exactly. um, and so some people were clearly not able to work, not able to earn an income, and not as lucky as, as, as we are as a family. So um, the credit goes to our wives, to be honest. They, they came up with the idea, and obviously it was something that we bought into straight away. Mm -hmm. um, we could see even amongst uh, friends and people in the compound, security guards, or, you know, lots of people working mm -hmm. around that Correct. there was a real need. So we knew that there was a need in our community and we just needed to reach out and, and try and make contact. So it was a pleasure to be able to do a little bit just to help people 
to tide over what was a really difficult time for, for, for all of us. But, but, you know, we are definitely way more privileged than them. And so we're glad that we were able to help um, our community in some way. Thank you very much, Doctor, and may God bless you and the family of the Professor Konje for that uh, kind gesture you extended to Cameroonians who had nothing to eat at uh, that time. So um, I'll be asking you another question. I think that should be our last question. Mm -hmm. um, you saw the population on that day. We have more than 2,500 Cameroonians in this country, but we could only have about uh, 100 in that hall on that day. Even though we had a restriction, I mean, a spare, following the coronavirus restrictions, uh, we were not supposed to have more than 120 people in that hall. Mm -hmm. But people never knew about this when we were doing the registration. Okay. But we could not have more than 100 people. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are a lot of people who really don't want to come closer. So, and there are actually, there are so many other people who would have wanted to attend that occasion, mm -hmm. but they never had the means or others were at work. Yeah. Let us now focus on people who are not interested in being part of this uh, course. Mm -hmm. What do you have to tell them, Doctor? So the, the first thing is, I, I, look, I, I understand some of the issues that make people not want to get involved. Um, our country is going through a lot of challenging times, um, as we all know, with, with, with the problems in the Northwest and the Southwest. Um, and so there's a, there's a disconnect for certain people who don't feel Cameroonian anymore. Um, my feeling on this is nobody takes that right away from me. Um, you know, it's my birthright, it's my country, I love it. Um, and the fact that we have people in, in, in certain positions that are, uh, are causing divisions doesn't mean that we as brothers and sisters should be divided. In fact, it's the time when we need to come together to solve those problems. Especially in foreign lands. Especially land. in foreign lands. And, 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 and just talking about the, some of the challenges that we face as a community. If mm -hmm. the community comes together, builds up the numbers, shows evidence of those numbers, mm -hmm. then clearly you, 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 there's a more powerful um, a chance that you get representation by way of a consulate or an embassy. So um, there are certainly benefits to be had from, from working together as a, as a group. Uh, but also, um, it also means that we can try and resolve our problems as a people and move forward. Um, you know, Cameroon is, is an amazing country. Um, we are an amazing people, tough, resilient achieving so much. I mean, one of the, the beauties of the last week is, is the fact that the, the Lions will be here in Qatar. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to it. But if you think about that small country and what it's achieved, eight qualifications for the World Cup, yeah. um, no other African country has done that. So, you know, if we put our minds to anything as a country, we can achieve it. So why do we think we can't solve the problems that we have? It just means focus and let's solve the problems. If we have open dialogue and we're honest with each other, the solutions are not that hard. It, it doesn't take, you know, rocket science to solve these problems. We all know what the solution is. So let's just get together, get it done, live together in the beautiful way that we used to. I mean, our country is so diverse and it's the diversity that makes its beauty, you know? And actually, it's, it's that ability to speak so many languages, to speak English and French that gives us a massive advantage everywhere we go in terms of jobs and opportunities. Yes. So, you know, let's not spoil that. Let's Correct. build on that yeah. and let's move forward. Um, and I'm sure in another 10, 15 years, our country will be a leading light in Africa where it should be. Exactly. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. You have already touched the part of uh, the Indomitable Lions having <laughs> qualified. I mean, it has brought a lot of joy uh, on the minds of many Cameroonians who are living here. And uh, we all are expecting to welcome them here in November and uh, for us to leave that moment. Maybe one last word to Cameroonians living in Qatar before we go. So, yeah, it's just to say hello to all my brothers and sisters in Qatar. We are all here together. We are here to support each other. Uh, and certainly from a medical perspective, um, if anyone has any problems and I can be of help, then that, that's surely something that I can do um, um, my best to help in whatever way possible. So let's, let's come together, support each other and be one family. This is what we are. Thank you very much, Dr. Osric Nafti, for having uh, uh, accepted to speak into Eddie Boy's studio camera and uh, sending some very important message to Cameroonians out there. We are very happy to have you as well as we know that you are happy to have us and with your family. We want to wish you well as well. And uh, you've heard him. 
Uh, if you have any challenges, especially uh, regarding uh, medical or any other challenge, is uh, this home is too open for everyone. I've been here so many times. Uh, a lot of uh, activities have been hosted here. I mean, it's an open home. Thank you very much, Doctor, and uh, mm -hmm. have a wonderful one. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Mm -hmm.